Dr. Phil. Bloodline, coast to coast. Bloodline, I'm Adam. That's uh, Dr. Drew over there. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Dr. Drew, board certified physician, addiction medicine specialist. Tonight we will be uh, dedicating the entirety of the show to uh, today's tragedies over at the uh, World Trade Center and at the Pentagon and uh, over in a field in Pittsburgh. Mm. This, uh, by the way, uh, the second time, plane has went straight in in a field outside of Pittsburgh. Mm. Remember the uh, first one was about uh, 94. Remember they never got to the bottom of it? Just the plane know. just went straight in. Mm. Yeah, rural area outside of Pittsburgh. Interesting. I remember the one in Chicago. But this now, they know this one was headed for Camp David. Right? Oh, no, they don't know it was heading for Camp David. They do because the calls they got from the air phones, people calling their families who yeah. were hijacked, the hijackers told them that's where they were going. Oh, wait a minute. Not <laughs> true. I, I, you know, I, I watched uh, 10 different news channels up until the second I left my house at uh, 9.30. They said it was turning around and it was heading toward Washington. And the, there was uh, speculation earlier that it may have been heading toward Camp David. But uh, Camp David is uh, in what what city? You want to, you want to help me out, Beth? Yeah, because you heard the same thing I heard, obviously. No, what I heard was that they had made the, uh, the hostages call their loved ones and tell them what was going on. That they were going to Camp David. I didn't hear anything about that. No, no. I Drew, know. I, really, that sounds... I Maybe this evening they haven't been saying that during the day. Well, Drew, that's that's. I think that's pretty erroneous stuff because they. I, I watched the news up and listened to on the uh, ride over. I heard there was phone calls. A uh, guy called from a bathroom of a plane that he locked right. himself in, said he'd been hijacked. But I, I I heard no reports of anybody saying they told their families, you know, where they were going, and uh, there was no Camp David. I, Camp David came up, but that that is all speculation. Okay. Uh, apparently what happened with that last plane is they were turning it around and heading it toward uh, the Capitol. Right. And, you know, if they got the Pentagon and they got the World Trade Center, Why not? they're probably going for the White House yeah, or the Capitol that. building or yeah, something they're, like they're that. They were playing, too. It was. Yeah. I didn't know that. And uh, That's nothing I've heard. 767, maybe. And uh, that one went straight in, which would uh, suggest to me that uh, either the uh, pilot was uh, able to fight them off and just drive it straight in, or that the guy, the terrorist who was uh, planning on flying the plane, may not have flown it as well as he planned. Uh, I don't know, Drew, so why don't we just go through it? I mean, basically, you guys are hearing all the uh, stories today and uh, all the information and all the, you know, every news group, every radio station, every TV show, every cable outlet is bringing information on this. But we're here to talk about the sort of emotional side of this thing. Yeah, just to help. Just people, people place to just come and talk. We, young people don't have a real place to talk about this, right? Really? I mean, nobody really does. Yeah. I mean, it's it's all about the specifics of the event that went on today, but not the emotional repercussions of it. So, Drew, what did you find? I mean, take us through your day. My day, I was, my phone went off to uh, Kara, my, my radio. I, I, I'm, by the way, suffering post-traumatic stress. All right. Which, uh, I'll go through the list of what that is, and uh, I guarantee I'd like everything on it. <laughs> it's, uh, let's just go through what that is so you can understand why I can barely express myself. Well, you, you, ate, uh, you ate four pounds worth of butter yes, yes, I did. tonight. Yes, So that's one of that Check that off. Uh, re-experiencing the event through vivid memories of flashbacks. Feeling emotionally numb, which is how I felt all day. Yeah. Feeling overwhelmed what be, by what would be normally considered everyday situations. I kind of talk. Right. Uh, crying uncontrollably. Isolating oneself from family and friends. Did, did you cry uncontrollably? Not uncontrollably. Because uh, you went. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I found myself, uh, I didn't weep, I found myself getting teary, teary yeah. during the acts of heroism. Yeah. Um, the part where they were talking about lines going around the block for the Red Cross centers and people uh, volunteering, this and that, and the firemen going in, that's the part that sort of touched me. Here we go. Uh, here is the Marine Corps briefing Washington. Flight 93 was apparently intended for Camp David. Yeah, but that that was a crash that, that was, was 85 miles northwest of Camp David. 85 miles northwest. Well, then and, Camp, and heading Camp, southeast. Camp David's in Pittsburgh. <laughs> that's that's me. Okay, but here's the, here's what I'm saying, Joe. Thurman, Maryland. That, Thermont, Maryland. That was uh, that was at 10:45 this morning. I mean, that, no, this is the, this is the website review of the day. 
Now, I, I, I'm telling you, I stared okay, at But now you know where I got that from. I, I understand that, but uh, apparently that was just early circulation. Right, so, uh, relying increasingly on drugs or alcohol to get through the day. And which, the president, oh, yeah, I'll get into that. The yeah. president wasn't at Camp David. Nor was he in the White House. I, I know, but wouldn't they have known he wasn't at Camp David? Or I maybe know, not I that know. far in advance? Or maybe they thought that's where they'd evacuate him to or something. I don't okay. know. Okay. Feeling extremely moody, irritable, angry, suspicious, or frightened. Having difficulty falling or staying asleep, sleeping too much, experiencing nightmares. Feeling guilty about surviving the event or being unable to solve the problem, change the event, or prevent the disaster. Feeling fears and sense of doom about the future or experiencing health problems. Okay, so this is all part of eight, eight of ten of them. Post-traumatic stress mm -hmm. disorder. Yeah. And so you woke up at what time? I woke up about 6.20 and heard, I think, Ralph break into K-Rock's radio broadcast saying that... K-Rock is the... Uh, Mother right. station yeah. out here right. in Los Angeles. And saying, uh, you know, anyone watching on television knows now that the, a plane has crashed into the World Trade Center. My wife, who sleeps like a, like she's dead, yeah. took this she huge died. gasp and flew out of bed. I really? mean, before, I just sat there listening with my eyes open, thought, oh my God, how awful. And she was like, whew, out. <laughs> and down to the TV, had the kids rounded up, and uh, then we spent the rest of the day trying to keep them from the Now, now, now why, yeah, why round up the kids? I mean, well, you uh, want, it's sort of your instinct. It's like during an earthquake, you'll get the kids. That's the first thing you do. Okay. And they had gotten up earlier because they just started school and they were already getting ready. What was going on over there? Yeah, yeah, the know. people up at four in the morning? Six. six. And, uh, and then I tried to see patients and I couldn't concentrate and I had some writing to do and I had, you know, I went to the hospital and made a, just appeared at my chemical dependency unit just to show people some support and they were trying to process the, Events and a lot of the new people in New York and had friends in the building and whatnot. It was it was it was awful. You ever been to the World Trade Center? <laughs> yeah. You've been uh, up top at the uh, observation I deck. No, I don't think I ever have. But well, I just imagine people having breakfast at windows of the world, tourists and things. I mean, this is yeah. the culmination for some people of the trip. I have uh, I've been up to that observation deck up there on the 110th floor, and uh, you, you just stand up there. You, you can't believe that you're that high off the ground. You're not in an airplane right. or a hot air balloon. Right. Number one, I mean, you can see all of Manhattan. Number two, you just can't believe that that's a man-made structure that you're standing on top of. And, 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 but no. it is so large in scale. You know, I think when people who haven't been there see it from a helicopter shot or see it from one of those very distant shots, right. it's so tall that it almost looks like it's, it's sort of thin. wafy. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it doesn't look as substantial as it actually is. No, it's massive. It is massive. And the, the, even that downstairs lobby is like a huge, like a giant train station. Right. Mm -hmm. the, the downstairs of the place is, uh, you know, eight, ten stories before there's a ceiling, right. just, just in the lobby. Yeah. I mean, it is as big a structure as uh, humanly Made now. Imagine you're at the 80th floor and it's on fire and you're, these people are jumping out. I mean, that's just that. I, uh, I, I couldn't, couldn't, uh, you know, I couldn't watch any of that. I really yeah. couldn't. Uh -huh. And and I could imagine. Now, see, here's what I was trying to gather. They said that 50,000 people could have been in that building at right. any, any, you know, during business hours. And it was at 8:45 in the morning or so. So I'm assuming there was quite a few uh, people in that building. Now, the plane hits the first building about 8.45 in the morning. The, the people, uh, Drew, don't, don't get nutty with that. It was 8.41 or something like that. Don't uh, get crazy. I see if that's right. Okay, go ahead. Uh, the point is, is the people in that building and in the tower next to it must have naturally assumed that this was a, was a plane that had some mechanical right. difficulty right. Or, or had trouble with their heading or bearing or yep. compass. And this is just a horrible, yeah. tragic right. accident. Mistake. Yeah. Right. But you probably would not feel in any way that threatened, threatened yeah. that another plane yeah. would hit the in thing. Fact, in fact, you'd feel like, what are the chances of that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, if, if you were in the other tower and a betting man... You'd stand and look and say, ooh, look what's going on across the way. I would have absolutely just had my face pressed up against the window staring at the other tower that was uh, next to mine. Now, I'm sure that people obviously cleared the tower, those who could cleared the tower, the one that was hit. But I assume that they would have cleared the tower that was next to it almost immediately as well because of the opportunity of the tower possibly falling over or damaging their tower in some way through an explosion or something like that. Yep. So I'm, I'm hoping that, no, but you know, Drew, don't go, don't go worst case scenario. Larry King, Larry King interviewed some people on his show tonight who said they were told to stay at work, just, you know, they've got taken care of. 
So they, they were sent, the people in the second tower were told, don't go down, don't go out in the street, you could be hit by debris. That's the kind of thing I was hearing. Okay, then, and that makes sense. Yeah. I mean, you could see them saying, don't rush out into the street. Well, we, we need 20,000 people in the street now, we're trying to fight a fire in the big building here. What if it falls over on them? You know what I mean? When they're out yeah, in the street. Yeah. Okay, so th that's the part that's very sad to me, which I couldn't yeah. really discern through all the news reports and everything today, which was, were people clearing out of that second tower or not? I don't think so. And uh, so the answer may be no. Mm -hmm. And then the second part is is the uh, the first one, I believe, hit higher up. The, uh, the first one hit higher up, and the second one hit a little more toward the center. Right. Correct? Right. Both still, at least uh, at the upper floors. Right. I was uh, flabbergasted that the thing came down to the ground. I, I was it killed me. I, I didn't believe it. I thought the thing was going to burn up there like yeah. a like a wooden matchstick planted in some sand. Yeah, towering and inferno. Just burn Remember out. That? Remember that? Yeah, that the flames and the fire would head up yeah. toward the roof and then it would burn Same out. Here. I had uh, I had no idea that the thing would implode that I, way. I, that, that was when I went into the state of shock. And apparently it was all the uh, hundreds of gallons of jet fuel that were coming down the thing that were catching fire yeah. that were weakening it in the middle of the building. And then it once it was weakened in the middle, the top half crushed yeah. the bottom half. But, uh, it, you know, it, diabolical in, it, in, in the plan, by mm -hmm. the way. Mm -hmm. I mean, a jet with uh, thousands of gallons of fuel uh, ready to full go cross, of fuel, cross country. ready to go across the country. Yeah. Uh, just uh, amazing. Now I'm wondering. I'm wondering if the people playing the tech even dreamed that the thing would come down completely once it wasn't toppled. It's, it's an interesting question, but they they claim people. I heard again people talking that they sort of studied that what they did wrong when they tried to blowing up the parking lot to try to get it to collapse. Right. And Wait, that clearly was their goal. And what happened structurally when they blew it up in the parking lot was uh, almost nothing, yeah. obviously, compared to this. Right. And even though it was a huge detonation, the building was so sound and so steady so huge. that it really was never in any real danger of coming down. That's right. So, uh, I mean, I was at the building sh relatively shortly after it was... Uh, the detonation of the parking lot went down maybe a year later. Hmm. Everything was back to normal. It just really wasn't no big thing. But uh, this mean, is, this is you know, absolutely catastrophic. And, and we're going to just begin. We, we haven't even gotten a measure or even an idea. We went on to the buildings around. I mean, think, how many other th think how many other things must have been destroyed. Yeah, and those, those buildings, which uh, just look like... Uh, you know, the, the model buildings you'd have next to your train set compared to the 110-story World Trade Centers were substantial buildings. I mean, there was 30, 40, 50-story mm -hmm. buildings probably around there that housed thousands and thousands of uh, offices and people. And, uh, you know, just to give it some scope, I was I was sort of thinking about that they, they think, uh, and no one knows, but the speculation is maybe 25,000 people die. Could be as you know high. I, I think forty would probably be high, and I'm hoping, fifteen would be low. I'm hoping for five or six, something like that. I mean, it just, it it, it just seems in, inconceivable that yeah. uh, at least uh, fifteen thousand didn't get it in that. But anyway, you look at it. You know, Vietnam had about uh, fifty-six thousand people die. So I mean, people, it, but by the way, military operations. Not necessarily Vietnam, but most military operations, people are going with the understanding that they could die. That's what they're there for. Yeah. These are people going to work. But I'm it's saying... Totally innocent. Just... Uh, on scope. It, it, on yeah. scope, this could theoretically claim half the lives... Of Vietnam. Of, of the entire, you know, 10-year Vietnam conflict. And so it's uh, absolutely... Uh, absolutely amazing and catastrophic. I, you know, and, and to think that the that the origin of all these deaths could all be linked back to a uh, $2 box cutter type knife that you get at the hardware store or, you know, sort of a sh plastic shiv that would be fashioned in yeah. uh, some uh, prison house somewhere. You know what I mean? Yeah. I was sitting in my living room today, and this is why I don't smoke pot anymore. With I, mushrooms. I was picturing the... Ten dollars worth of weapons that were smuggled onto these planes. Yeah. The, the knives. The, they said like maybe a box cutter or a carpet cutter type knife. That these two and three dollar items 
were linked to 15,000, 20,000 deaths. You, you know, know, and, you know and that it that it did that that that's what killed this many people. Not even one bullet fired. Right. Do you know what they do on L L, the Israeli airline? No, a strip yeah. search no. and they, no. they handcuff you to the seat. Uh, uh, plane clothes air marshals in with the passengers on mm -hmm. every flight. Every flight. Right. Well, that's that, what we have. that may start here. We got. I, I'm not. I only feel good about flying until that happens. Well, I'll feel good about flying when they start serving booze before the plane takes off in first class, not until after we're in the air. That's when I'm going to feel better about it. So, flying. really, tonight we just want to be available and the two people want to talk about and yeah. sort of process some of this. And, and if you have post-traumatic stress symptoms, we have helplines. We have the numbers you can call if you need American Airlines information, United Airlines information. Yeah. Uh, everyone have o, o blood, type O blood. They are accepting only type O blood now, so go give it. Why is that? What they have the, the shortage of it's universal donor, so they just give it using that. That that's the most popular. Yes, yeah, the most popular blood type this evening. Yes. Type well, what do, you, what do you mean the universal donor? You, you don't works? have to match it. You don't have to match the blood. Typo. You yeah. don't have to match. Yeah. yeah. You know, I I did call the Red Cross uh, today to try to give some blood, and I I got the busy signal about uh, four times in a row, and then uh, I went to go work on my car. What? But how, at least I tried. How did you hold Daniel? Uh, we have a friend that lives near the tower. Yeah, we, my uh, one of my best friends lives uh, right near the tower, and uh, his uh, his wife, uh, also a good friend of mine, was uh, at a lunch date at the tower oh today my God. at uh, noon. Oh my God! Just just freaky, huh, everybody? You see, was he flipped out? Uh, no, he seemed to be all right. Was he drunk? He was pretty high. Okay. Yeah. 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 We all cope in our own way. Yeah. Let me ask you one quick question. Maybe someone can give me this answer. Maybe Drew uh, can. When uh, I was trying to call the uh, Red Cross, and it was like one eight hundred or one eight eight eight, give life. Give life. Yeah. And I was dialing the number, and it was busy. One eight hundred. Give life. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I dialed it a couple of times, and it was busy a few times. I figured, well, they're they're they got a lot of phone calls. But then I started thinking, wait a minute, give life. Isn't that eight? Yeah. You just don't worry about that, that last E. Oh, you mean, but I dialed it anyway. Yeah, you dialed it anyway, just to remember the number. Oh, I see, but you shouldn't dial it. Don't, don't have to dial it. Dial it. Yeah, I started freaking out. I thought, well, I'm dialing eight numbers. It's, it's, it's not going to work. Let's give lift. Yeah, give lift. 1-800-GIVE-LIFT. Mm -hmm. Robbie? Robbie? Yeah. Hey, what's yeah. going on? 16, Maryland. Yeah, um, I'm just getting over an anxiety attack. Mm-hmm. And my grandfather called me not too long ago, telling me that my uncle, who lives in New York, was injured during the uh, during the World Trade Center thing. He wasn't too specific. He was he didn't really he was in a panic, and he, he didn't really give me that much information other than the fact that my uncle was injured. And you know, just getting over an anxiety attack, I don't think this is too good. And I was. So, so you have a history of anxiety attacks, or you just this is your first one? This is my first one. Okay. Well, wait a minute. You're saying just getting over it. You were having an anxiety attack watching the sh the TV broadcast, or what? No. Um. Two days ago, I just I, I I just sort of snapped, and I you know I just sort of shut myself up in my room and locked the door, and I didn't want to talk to anyone. And my mom took me to my uh, psychiatrist. My psychiatrist told me I was having an anxiety attack. Okay, so you you were already having problems, and then this sort of just accelerated all that. Yes, sir. Yeah. Why yeah. Uh, didn't uh -huh. your mom didn't want to intercept that phone call coming from Grandpa? My mom wasn't home at the time. Ah, uh, I see. Mm -hmm. So he had no details, just telling you. He was panicking. Uh, my uncle is his oldest son, and he was you know, he was panicking, and he didn't really. Did he have any details? What? What? Did, can you call him back? Now, how did he know he was injured, but no details? Uh, I don't know. My grandfather was the one who got the call, mm -hmm. and. Well, have you called him back since? Uh, I can't get through. Mm. Oh, boy. All right. Yeah. Well, I mean, just... I, I, I mean, I assume he's alive or he wouldn't have gotten a report saying he was injured. Right, but I was just... I, the thing is, I'm I'm worrying over, like, what his condition is. Is he seriously injured? Is he just well, you, injured? Do you have friends or anybody you can keep around you right now? Uh, yeah, I have one. I have one friend. I, right. I've been trying to call him all night, but I can't. I, yeah, I, hopefully he's listening now and he'll get off the web. But <laughs> he's, he's, he's busy chatting on the web, huh? Yeah. All right. Well, listen, Robbie. Just you sound okay. Keep people around you. I, our prayers go up for your uncle. And, uh, it, it sounds pretty good to us. Because you know, 
so the, like the hospital reports were that people that were getting there mostly smoke inhalation, that kind of thing. So yeah. You, you, either, you either were sort of okay or it's game over. Yes, yeah. yes. It, it it seemed to me like it was uh, that sort of um, like what happens in a plane crash. Either uh, mm -hmm. either you're okay or you're dust. But yeah. uh, it seemed like yeah, most people were being treated for uh, smoke inhalation. Sierra. Hello. Hey. Hey, how are you doing? Good. You're 22. What's up? Um. Yeah, I've just been living in the country for about two, three months now, and um, I don't know. It's just. So living in this country. Yes, living We're in this country. From New Zealand. New Zealand, right? Okay, and I'm feeling sort of like um, quite a bit like Doctor Drew today. Numb. You know, yeah, completely numb. But um, I don't know if you'd if you'd asked me a week ago, you know, what I thought of the country, I would have said, you know, oh, there's so much infighting, you know, and there's so much crap going on in this country right now, blah blah blah. But I've never seen in one day an entire nation pull together. Like this. I'm, in, I'm in complete awe. I come from a country of 3 million people. And 300 million people, you know, have managed to just... It is, it's an interesting quality this country has always had. It's been its history really forever. Yeah. Is that, in fact, what you probably haven't heard, Sierra, is that people in this country will say things like, what we need is a good enemy to pull us together. You know, you'll hear that in this country. If people, You need a common, somebody to, you know, take our attention off our own crap. Yeah. and focus it externally and here boy we got it now yeah i, I was uh, amazed and touched and it was the you know the one good thing that happened today is people uh really seem to band together and uh i you know here's the thing about the united states and, and i'd say people in general they're they're pretty good i think they get i think uh we get a bad shake i think all human beings get a bad shake but when the chips are down 99 percent of people are really good they really are. You you hear about the one percent that's evil, yeah. but more than ninety nine percent of them are just decent people who care about other people. And when something like this happens, they risk life and limb trying to save strangers. That's what's killing me is all the firefighters and policemen that went in there. Yeah, that, that is just an awful piece of the story. Yeah, but I, I tell you, I was really touched by you know the overcrowding at the Red Cross centers. Yeah and uh, people's just sort of general ability to pull it together. And, and I know there's been a lot of criticism lately of uh, this country and this generation, and what if we had to fight another war? I don't think we could today with the attitude of the young people in this country and so on and so forth, the complacency. But I think, uh, I think we can rally. I, I really do. This is an interesting call. No, I want to take this call before, just because it's pertinent to what we're saying here. All right. Gary, Ohio, 18. Yeah. Gary? Yeah. Hey, you're 18. What's up? Um, my question is uh, about what's all been going on today. Yeah. Um, when I woke up this morning, I seen that uh, this morning, and I enlisted in the Army. You, 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 you watched the television, and you ran out and enlisted? Yeah. Were I had a, girl, or had a staff sergeant come to my house. Wow. And he... I enlisted in the army. Was he busy today? Was he running around doing that? Was you? Was this an? He was running doing that. So this was not an unusual reaction. What's he? It, <laughs> wait a minute. How does that work? Like the ice cream truck, but he drives a tank and goes up and down the street ringing a bell. He come over to the house. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, they do. I yeah. don't want to say it, but I joined the Coast Guard today, Drew. Oh, so this was my last night. Out of here. Enjoy. And I want to know if that's a good thing to do. I mean, well, look, it's a good thing. I I would say, uh, Gary, that uh, it's a big decision, and it's not the kind of thing uh, you want to make uh, because you got fired up watching uh, CNN this morning. But on the other hand, if you're 18 and you got nothing to do, uh, why not? I, I can I can. You imagine. didn't drop out of Harvard, did you? No. I can imagine that impulse at 18 being very strong, especially if you really felt the threat and. Uh, yeah, I'm all I'm yeah. all about it. And I'll tell you what, if you if you have family in that building, what would stop you? You know what I'm saying? Right. That's what you go do. You know, uh, you know what I was thinking. We got to take a break, but I was thinking, oh Christ, now we're going to go over there, and we're going to bomb uh, Iraq or drop something in Saudi Arabia or do something to Iran or go find uh, uh, Bin Laden or something like that. And I thought. Gee, that feel that'll feel good, and then it's going to feel real bad getting on an airplane for the rest of my life. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. Because you figure, all right, they will then come back. You, you, you know, they will forget how it started. Mm -hmm. Here's my strategy. Here's what I'd like to say to all these uh, terrorist nations. 
All right, look, you killed a whole bunch of people. You blew up the World Trade Center. You happy now? Oh, uh, look, we could blow up your country. We're not going to do it. But let's put an end to this. I don't think they'd listen. Mm -hmm. I don't think the American public would enjoy that. Mm -mm. I just fear we're going we're gonna to retaliate, and they're going to forget how this thing ever got started, mm -hmm. and they're going to want to retaliate against our retaliation. Mm -hmm. And I don't think, and I don't want to freak everybody out, but if you have people that are sort of don't care much about their own lives and there's a technology in place today that can uh, – aid mass destruction i really don't see how and we live in a country with fairly open borders where we we, we will not you know segregate discriminate or do any of that i mean we're not going to do any japanese internment camps of the 40s i don't know what we can do about it i just don't know today i don't know what we could have done about it if someone would have told us hey sometime in the next three weeks this is going to happen mm -hmm. And what are you supposed to do, by the way, when you're the White House of the Pentagon and there's a, a, a United States of Blame. America yeah. passenger jumbo jet that is strayed out of its airspace? Right. Put a missile, put a sidewinder into it? You would assume you don't know. You would assume the guy's having some mechanical troubles. I mean, you, you got about 10 seconds to make a decision, and I don't know who's going to uh, push that button and send that plane into the ground. Mm. Okay. We'll take a break. We'll uh, be back with more of your comments, questions, and um, feelings. feelings about uh, the uh, tragic events of today. Hey, it's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's through Phone number 1-800-L-O-V-E-191. Uh, we got to talk, uh, we're talking tonight about, uh, the tragedies, the, uh, terrorist tragedies, the attacks on the United States that went down today, and that's basically what we're dedicating to tonight's, tonight's show to, uh, your feelings about that. And, you know, as I said at the beginning of the show, we've all been tuned into the news sources today and getting lots of facts and tidbits and bites and information, but we haven't heard anyone talking about their feelings, mm -hmm. and that's kind of what this show's about, so, uh, that's what we're doing tonight. I was uh, hearing a lot of speculation out here in Los Angeles. They shut down the airport, and they had everyone on tactical alert. There was some speculation that there might be something going down in Los Angeles because I guess all four of the planes were heading toward Los Angeles. Really? Was it three out of four? No, uh, yeah. The fourth was going yeah. for, to Frisco, yeah. but Southern California. And I, uh, I never thought there was going to be a problem. I assumed that uh, the reason they targeted those planes is because they were coming from the east coast and all with all the fuel yeah full of it's fuel something happened out here people are like oh, fat. number <laughs> number uh, two oh, thank you number two i don't think the terrorist uh, nations uh, look at los angeles as part of the united <laughs> states that's, right. that's really what i realized that's right anyone who's ever been in los angeles go downtown and walk around you don't know where the hell you are Right. You you really think you may be in Ecuador or Bangkok yeah, or huh? Vietnam? Yeah. You would not think you're in part of the United yeah, States. Yeah. So I think uh, I think for a terrorist to uh, organization to target the United to target Los Angeles would be redundant. It, listen, they point, might as well just pick some place on the map and drop a bomb on it. They kill more Americans. Multi ethnic multiculturalism has become our greatest defense right here in Los Angeles. That's right. You can't kill us. We're you. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> All right, so uh, that's uh, that's one thought uh, I had. Uh, and also I figured, look, these people are not going to pull off a big thing, put everyone on tactical alert, get everyone into the ready, the battle battle positions, and then do something five hours later. Yeah. The whole thing is it's surprise. I mean, that, the, the number one thing terrorists have working for them is surprise. Yeah. And I don't think that they're so stupid as to try to pull something off when everybody is, uh, you know, at the battle station. I still have lingering concerns about biological warfare. Huh. Because they could do something weird just to show that they could do it, with even in tactical alert time. But he, but here's here's the thing. <clears throat> As I said, I really think the number one thing that the terrorists have is element of surprise and panic and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And they want to strike when waters are at their comments. Yeah. And I don't think... For this reason, now I know everyone's worried about further terrorist attacks in the next upcoming days, hours, and weeks. To me, this is the, the least probable time it would yeah, happen. Yeah. They'll do it a few years from now when the airport security has uh, gotten, become lax again. Uh, unless, again, they just want to show that they can. Just throw a few more suicides out of this. But, 
but they're, it's it's you know bang. Yes, but it's bang for their buck. That's right. They're yeah. not going to get as many. That's right. That's right. Okay. Hey, uh, looks like uh, Darren, the uh, wayward drummer for Goldfinger, is on the line. Oh, Christ. I got a piece of paper uh, sitting uh, at home on my desk. It says, uh, call Darren from Goldfinger. Well, he called me like three weeks ago. No, you don't have to. told me to get his wife a job somewhere, <laughs> and I haven't called him back yet. Darren? Hey, Adam. Hey, Darren. Yeah, my wife wants to go into prostitution, but I'm not sure about that yet. Right. Go into. How about get out of? Put the boom. Put the boom. <laughs> Anderson? Did, uh, yeah, Anderson, come on. Give, give me the high hat. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Did, did, did your wife find a gig? No, she's still looking for a job. You, you know, the, that's, that's, that's not the, point. The, the man shows in hiatus. I, I didn't have any. I didn't have anywhere to send her. But I, I'm sorry, buddy. I know I owed you a call. It's all good. It's all good. You're busy. Yeah, I, I was, but I was gonna call. Hey, Darren, what would you call about? Well, I, first of all, I wanted to, to um, say I'm just upset and angry about what happened, and I want to give my condolences to the families, mm. the victims, and uh, my prayers are with them. Mm. All day long, I've been praying about it. Uh, and so I think I have a solution, maybe a partial solution, an idea. I think maybe people in the higher-ups, especially the people in the FAA, could run with this. They could make the, a plane or take all the planes that are America and gut them and uh, make the cockpit door like a vault. And once the plane takes off, it is not opening until it lands. Hmm. Now, make it like you stick thick steel, and it will just not open. Yeah, they could, they could still set up a bomb or something. But, yeah, that's what would be one. Well, here, I thought of that. It, 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 say it's taken off and the thing is shut. It's got its own air system, its own. It's, it's, it's airtight. A hijacker grabs the stewardess and gets on the phone and says, Hey, pilot, I got this stewardess, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to slit her throat and shoot everybody at once a minute until you turn the plane around and land it in Cuba or throw it into the Empire State Building or land in downtown L.A. The pilot's protocol should be go ahead and try to land the plane as soon as possible. Yeah. Well, it's funny. I, uh, I that wrote, way the plane doesn't become a weapon. Yeah. I, I wrote on my uh, little scratch pad lock here. Door to cabin. Lock cabin door. But those things are like bathroom doors. You can kick them in with your feet. Yeah, I, I know. I, I didn't mean I didn't mean put a little uh, barrel bolt that uh, your grandma's bathroom has on it. But I, I, I agree. I don't think you have to make the thing like a bolt. You just have to make a good, sturdy metal door that remains locked at all times. Yeah, but locked to the point where even like if they had a high-powered automatic weapon or a, well, or a let, really big like crowbar. They but, yeah, but Darren, here, here's the here's the problem. If they got an automatic weapon yeah. on board. Yeah. Um, there's a tragedy. Yeah, and they can get blow something up too. And right, the plane's going down. Now the, I, I agree that they can shoot the passengers or shoot the. But crew. it's not a weapon. The, the, it yeah. takes the it takes the weapon. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah. the point the point is That's all they, they did today. They used the planes as weapons. Yep. Right, and and I mean, and this is this is going to help make your uh, cabin door argument. Uh, all they had was utility knives or some kind of crudely fashioned yeah. knife. Yeah. You know. I mean, not much more than, you know, maybe if you took a letter opener yeah. and, and sharpened it up on a stone That's kind right. of thing. Yeah, right. I heard they had X-Acto knives, too, which is ridiculous. Right, yeah. I mean, you could buy this stuff at, like, a craft store. Yeah. Yeah, they call them box cutters. And, uh, I mean, that's some speculation. I guess maybe the person that called in from the cell phone. Maybe only saw that. And, by the way, I... Do you think people would jump them? You know, they, I would. They don't let... You, you'd, think, you'd think so, but uh, people are caught off guard. And these may those. have been trained military guys. And, by the way, I, I don't want to be uh, morbid here, but they tell you not to use the cell phones because it may affect the plane. Uh, I don't know if that had anything to do with the crash. I'm assuming it's okay to use the plane. Maybe that's what brought the one down. Pittsburgh. I'm sure they want you to use the uh, cell phone. Uh, in that I think case. what happened in Pittsburgh is the pilot said, "Enough's enough. I'm not going to be involved in this," and just took it down. Yeah, and, uh, and that's an interesting point. Maybe it was airplane turbulence that really. Yes, <laughs> we all know how dangerous that can be. I'll, I'll tell you, I, I was thinking about uh, about Pittsburgh, and I I was just, I you know, I, they have um, cockpit. Um, voice recorders. Yeah, they're trying to get that in Pittsburgh. I believe. When yeah. they get that in Pittsburgh, they're yeah. going to find out something. whether this guy crashed a plane or whether the guy couldn't fly the plane so or they, was a, some sort of fight into whatever went yeah. on. Yeah, but anyway, hey, Darren? Yeah. Did you, did you have any uh, friends or relatives out in the. Uh, yeah, I did room? actually. I made all my phone calls today and everybody's uh, safe and accounted for. Good. So, uh, everything is good. All my uh, relatives and fam family right. and friends are all, all good. Well, well, Darren, thanks, Colin. We're going to get some more calls. Did, you, right, did right. your wife find a job, though? Seriously? No, no, not yet. All right. I'll call you then. All right, Adam. All right, Darren. Take hey, care. Buddy. Take care. Jeez, I have just got the worst PTSD. I'm, I'm like... Really? Anxious and numb. And... But you, you're kind of prone to that, right? Yeah. And why is that? Uh, I'm an anxious person, but but I, I get, I'm like 
I can't scream things out. It just gets in. Do you feel responsible for a lot of stuff? Mm -hmm. Well, maybe not responsible, but affected by. Yeah, like, 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 like. When Drew and I go do one of these college <laughs> tours or something, and uh, we talk to three thousand people, some college, uh, some college venue, and one person comes up to us after the show and says uh, how much they hate Doctor Drew. Wouldn't and, the world be better off without you guys? <laughs> that's, <laughs> right, that's right. Right. Some fat lesbo bitch who's uh, hopped up on NyQuil comes up and critiques Drew after the show. Drew's ruined from that point on. Dinner's ruined. The flight home the next day is ruined. Everything's ruined because of this one crazy broad. Huh. Yeah, see, Drew, yeah. You, can't, you can't go through life that way. Crow? Yep. You're 17? Yes, sir. What's up? Um, first of all, I just want to commend you guys for your service to uh, teenagers during this heinous act that was enacted by whoever did this. Well, thanks. It's our job. Yes. Um, well, first of all, I'd say that I do have anarchist views, but first and foremost, I am a human, and this tragedy has affected too many people. I mean, not just people who were killed. I mean, they're estimating along the lines of fifteen to 25,000 people that have died. Is that what they're doing now? Oh, yeah, I just caught the news and they're estimating about that much. It, it, it's, it's, I can't even, those are numbers I can't even like... It's, it's, really, it's, it's really hard though because, you know, I hear there's 300 firefighters missing and then I switch a channel and there's 400 firefighters yeah. missing. Either way, there's tragedy. Bad, yeah. uh, I don't know if we can speculate numbers wise, but I, I would say between 10 and 25 at oh, this point. Guaranteed. And your theory about the uh, black box... They're suspecting that the uh, hijackers have uh, ripped out the, uh, basically, power cables to those, mm. which in turn disabled those. So if that's happened, we won't know. So why why are they suspecting that? They, uh, something about the transponders being deactivated. Huh. Um, so they can't find the black box. Well, they, they I, I mean, I, I, you know, I, I, you know the, the, Jesus Christ, I'll tell you, if... Uh, if they find the one uh, that went in or the two that went into the World Trade Center, mm. you know, blew up amongst the thousands of gallons of jet fuel and then uh, fell a few thousand feet to the ground and were buried in uh, 70 feet of rubble, uh, if I was the manufacturer of that black box, I, I don't care if that would be my angle, advertising-wise. I mean, I would have a World Trade Center on the roof, you know, not, not full size, on the roof of my building. I know it sounds morbid, but I would really be proud of that. Yes. Uh, the one in Pittsburgh, it seems like they're probably going to have the best best chance of finding. Yeah, because they believe uh, the black box is only like uh, said to withstand about a certain amount of heat. They said oh. that the ones at the World Trade Center exceeded that. So yeah, they're they're not they're not indestructible. They're just no. very they're just well built. To it. Mm. Right, right. And so, man, I'm, I'm sure they're looking right now for the one in Pittsburgh. Yeah. But uh, anyway, listen. It, you know, if this if this works, I mean. If this creates heightened awareness and um, heightened security and ultimately saves lives, you know, down the road in the future, then the people that died did not die in vain. I, I, I can't even go there because how are you going to recoup 25,000 lives? It's going to take a lot of years of safety. Yeah. No, yeah. Um, well, no, I'm not, you know. Not saying it's a good thing. I'm just saying that uh, yeah, I, I can't. I can't even spin it positive. In fact, I, I get. I, I'm sorry to pick on you, but I get angry when, when, I, when I have people out there spinning it positive. Even even the press. It's like, Who spins I, it positive? Well, I, a lot, there's a lot of people going. You know, and now we're going to tighten down, and now we're going to do this, and we're doing that. And I'm like, hey, jackholes, why why did this happen in the first place? We've been people talking about this for years. Let's take a little responsibility for not having acted quicker on this. And this is just an awful, inexplicable catastrophe shouldn't have happened and take some blame for it and god damn it it's not going to happen again well i'll tell you the scenario of using the airplane as a missile which all seems you know incredibly obvious to everyone in the world at this point <laughs> did not apparently seem that obvious to there everybody novels written time. about it clancy novels written about this terrorist act this one of taking planes and uh, running them into things i mean these these were these are the these were the plans of terrorists. Uh, your your everyday citizen was worried more about anthrax and the subway. <laughs> That's true. And the uh, folks that are in charge of this kind of thing did not seem to put a whole lot of That's, stock hmm. in this either. That's the problem. And the fact that uh, no, you couldn't get a you couldn't get a gun into a plane, most likely. But I bet you I could get a fishing knife onto a plane. Yeah, I'm, I'm just I'm too angry to. to 
Let's take a little accountability on this, too. Let's have a little remorse for not having been more on top of this, too. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. We're going to uh, take a break. Uh, we're talking about the tragedies that, that went down today, and we're talking to you and, and your feelings about it. We'll talk more after this. Everybody, it's Bloodline. I'm Adam. That is uh, Dr. Drew over there. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. We're uh, taking calls about uh, the event. Oh, I just belched up my coffee. Nice. Don't you worry. Whole... No, no farting tonight. I, I, I noticed. I didn't want to remind you what last night was like. Devast- Speaking of tragedies, <laughs> that was a comp. I should have known something was going to happen today. I didn't beat off today, by the way. Wow, it really affected you. <laughs> yeah, that's that, now I got post traumatic stress. I thought, it, I thought you started not doing from more. the events from not beating off. Yeah, now yeah. you're kind of irritable. Yeah, yeah, I'm on edge. All right, so we're taking your calls tonight about uh, your feelings about what went on today and how it affected you or maybe people you know. And um, you know, you you heard all day and all the news agencies talking about all the informations and statistics and things like that. But we're here to talk about feelings, Ed. Yeah. You're 15. What's up? Yeah. Um, Dr. Drew, you were talking about, like, that po- post-traumatic stress stuff. Yeah. And, like, well, I've been feeling numb, and I've been shaking. Yeah, that's what that is. Okay, well, I mean, I was just experiencing that, but I thought I was just kind of cold in my room. No. But no, I'm, wrapped, a... I'm wrapped up in, like, four blankets right now. Yeah, it could be so... pneumonia you're coming down with. But, no, there's, there's absolutely a syndrome of... Uh, post-traumatic stress and it's your body kind of shutting down and disconnecting from the feelings that are really overwhelming and frightening and yeah, one of the best ways to combat that is to sit and talk about it with people that you care about and that's what we're trying to do here tonight just be available to people yeah well um i'm pretty much heading up like my high school because like a bunch of people have parents and people trapped up in new york mm. and so i've been calling like all my friends um like getting a list going of you know, who needs to get off there because we have like three or four car loads now. Going to New York. Going to New York tomorrow. You can't really get in there very well, though, can you? Not in Manhattan, no. anyway. No, well, but I mean, they're setting up morgues and stuff. And I mean, I have, I was talking to one of my friends for like half an hour and she couldn't speak like a word like the whole time. She was just crying. Because somebody she knew was up there? Yeah, her mom was up there. In the building? Yeah, she knew her mom was in the building, uh. like then, and she hasn't gotten any word. Does she know which building, the first hit or the she second the first hit? One, the first one. Uh. The first hit. Yeah. The first one people got out of, didn't they? A lot of people got out of that. Well, it, 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 the, the thing is, is the first hit, the, the good news about the first hit is, A, it was very high up. Yeah. Probably yeah. um, 80s, 80s yeah. in the 80s. So if you're below the 80s, uh, you you know you you may have been okay. Yeah. And two people uh, should have immediately been evacuated from that building. From that building. Yeah, yeah. and I have I have like other people like um, one of my friends, her cousin was up on the hundred fourth hundred fourth floor uh, of the first building, yeah. and he actually called his family and said, "I'm not making it out of here." And then the line went dead, and they saw it crumble down to the ground. Oh, my God. Yeah. He, he uh. called, uh, Drew, it took you a while to punch your mic tonight, by the way. Right. He called from a, a line that was working Cell in the phone, building. Probably. He, um, he had, uh, like, a satellite phone. Oh, oh my God. God. Oh, my God. So this thing hit underneath him. Uh. Yeah. In the uh, so, first building. I mean, Those are the people I, okay, jumping out the window. What I've had to deal with today... Yeah. It's like way beyond. Where are you? Where, what what part of Maryland are you in? Um, I'm in Crofton, Maryland. I'm like 15 minutes from Washington and Annapolis. What I'm the like hell was everyone doing up in New York? Why, why are all their parents up there? Because, like, I don't know. It's just me and my friends. We all have parents that kind of work the same places and stuff. But they, but they commute to New York every day? No, no. It's um just like there was a bunch of them up there on a trip for some meeting. Oh, my God. Well, oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, and don't even get me started about the Pentagon because I have so many people. Like, I had friends who drove down to Washington just to get people rides back from the Pentagon. Huh. Well, yeah, but, you know, I, I think a lot of people don't realize is, you know, the Pentagon 
People think of, you know, the admirals and no, four-star no, generals. No, no, I mean, that, no. that place has 10,000 people yeah, working there. People working, the staff secretaries and right. clerical people. Right? No, I mean, just sort of in a way like the Oklahoma. Yeah, yeah. It, you know, you, you think you're killing a bunch of uh, IRS agents, and you're really killing a bunch of daycare workers yeah. and secretaries. That's 99% of the people that inhabit right. those buildings. Yeah. <sighs> Thank God, you know, today yeah, was like... Keep up the, the good work, yeah. Today was the only day I thought, thank God the Corollas are losers. <laughs> One time, my folks strayed out of North Hollywood into Van Nuys, but they came right back. Running back. I don't have to worry. I know. I didn't even talk to any of them today. <laughs> I know exactly where they are. They're sitting in their crappy homes in North Hollywood. Oh, my God. <laughs> World Trade Center. Oh. <laughs> I don't think my dad's been in a two-story building before. All right. We're going to uh, take ourselves a break. Good luck, Ed. Uh, and uh, really, like, get the help that you need, please. And, and for your friends. More more. Absolutely. We'll be back. Love line. I'm Adam. That's Drew. Phone number one eight hundred L O V E one nine one. We're uh, talking, of course, tonight about uh, today's tragic events, and we've uh, dedicated the show tonight to uh, that topic. So, uh, as I've uh, stated before, we've uh, all been watching the news and hearing hearing about the death toll and speculation and black boxes and terrorists and uh, jet fuel and all that but uh, we're, we're talking about the more emotional side of it, the human side of it and how it affected you. Jesse? Hi. You're 12, what's up? Hey, how are you doing? Good. Hey, Jesse. Well, my, you know, that's, that's the other thing. One of the things I noticed today, you never notice how often somebody says, how are you doing? How and you, you go, good. And then you stop and you think, well, I'm not doing that good. No, I'm and barely then, hanging in. Then you say, well, should I correct it or should I just let the guy go get me the crap behind the counter and get on my way? Okay, well, um, this morning, uh, every morning I listen to Kevin Bean. Every night I listen to you guys. And uh, this morning I turned it on and it just came onto the station. It said something about a airplane hitting a building. So I turned on the news and I found out what happened. And I listened to the rest of the morning. I, I, I was in the car getting going to school. Uh-huh. And I was thinking about, um, you know, what it means for all these people to die. Yeah. And, like, I was, like, astounded. So then I get to school, and, like, everyone's like, whoa, do you hear how, how cool that is, man? How uh, cool? Yeah. But, like, you know, like they're not thinking about how the people died. And I was like, you know, it's really not all that cool. And I was thinking, you know, we're really not as impenetrable as we thought we were. And, like, you know, it's just, I thought... Are they going to be rebuild the twin towers to start another like another world war? You know, because of all like because of how we think it was the Arabians or something. Well, no? th- there's probably going to we're, we're effectively at war now, Jesse. I mean, that's the reality. Yeah. And whether or not it's going to be what you imagine a world war, I, I don't think so. Do you? I mean, who knows? No. I mean, no. I mean, people are going to take that kind of risk right now. Well, they uh, also, whatever countries uh, that are on our short list of uh, retribution uh, do not have the facilities to have a world war with us. It's right. gonna, the, the question is, is how much, how long, and where do we want to do the damage, right. not whether they're going to bring it over here or whether we're going to have to you know, recruit young people to go in and fight this war. Yeah. I mean, uh, it, it's going to be, you know, pretty surgical and painless it, to us. That is, uh, not to uh, whoever get who's on the, you know, whoever's on the other end of those uh, bunker busters that uh, we send out from our uh, F-14s is not going to be in great shape. And the uh, rebuilding of towers, I, I, it's going to be a long time before that area is rebuilt. You, you, you wonder, you wonder too uh, whether they will memorialize, m- memorialize yeah. it. I, I assume I they so. will. Yeah. Uh, on the other hand, and uh, thanks for the call, Jesse. On the other hand, you know, part of this country, and one thing that makes this country great is uh, we we get back, we dust ourselves off, get we off. get back up on our feet, yeah. and building two more would really be a statement to the world that you can't mm. you can't knock us down. Yeah. On the other hand, I really wonder. Mm, do we really want to put those targets up again? On the, <laughs> on the other hand, real estate being the way it is, and that part of the country, that mm. part of the world. 
Can you afford to take uh, 25 city blocks and make a park out of it right there? No, but maybe they could build something else that incorporates a memorial and something, something that says something. Yeah, but isn't that now, you know, as far as the kids, and uh, you know, I I, oh, I understand whoa. where they're coming from. Sure. I mean, the kids think it's cool. Yeah, because it was done. It was You're such a spectacular oh. event. I mean, Anderson and I were watching and read you know the tape for the millionth time, and he goes, "Oh yeah, that's CGI." I mean, the computer generated. Right. <laughs> Well, it's, you know, we're used to seeing that on film. It's the only reference point your mind yeah. has yeah. is Fourth of July yeah. or, or whatever Independence Day, things like this. I mean, it the only the only um, the only representation of that kind of destruction we've seen is uh, human no. beings who uh, did not fight in World War II right. is film, yeah. and uh, that looked. To me, is is I mean, it was you know fireball and a Jesus Christ, a a fully loaded uh, you know uh, jumbo jet heading right on the side of the World Trade Center. I mean, it looked like a Hollywood. And then the whole thing going down. It's like it's an act. It just happened. I, I know, and you know, and it makes me think how many times and how many recent movies uh, that building has come down. And uh, I believe uh, there was a meteor movie. The hell movie was that Armageddon and uh, Fourth of July. I mean uh, Independence Day, and then there was the uh, what was the other one? Oh, Con Air. Con Air. Con Air. That building went down. All right. <laughs> okay, Anderson, quiet down over there. Con Air. <laughs> the great. But, but you asked about the kids thing. It's cool. The great my, Waldo Pepper. My, my kid, yeah, kids. Kids, I think, don't want to deal with it. They do, they don't want to distance themselves. It's too overwhelming. Too scary. My kids. I went to the, I went to the school to pick them up today, you know, just sort of how things go and talk to their teachers and stuff. My boys wanted to go to this sort of afternoon camp they go to sometimes. They're like, huh, what are you doing here? Get away. Huh, we're going to camp. Uh, go away. Go to camp. Yeah, like, I, I, don't, you know, I don't think eight-year-old kids can process this. And when they do, they get upset, and then they get, they go away from it. Right. They, you know. Yeah, and, and I do think, I think... Uh, for young kids, that this kind of, on the other side of the country at least, mm -hmm. uh, catastrophic stuff is better than the one serial killer that's on the loose in their area. Mm -hmm. Could be in terms of freaking them out mm -hmm. because they don't they don't understand the numbers game. Right. Okay. Let's uh, go to Steve. Is forty four, Steve? Hey, Adam. Hey, uh, Doctor Drew. Hey. Um, one thing that kind of struck me, I'm, I'm, uh, was really angry this morning, and I ended up uh, going to donate some blood at uh, Children's Hospital. And then this afternoon, I was just really depressed. But one thing that struck me is how originally they were showing uh, the Palestinians dancing in the streets when they found out about this, and then it seemed the uh, networks completely put a lid on that afterwards. Yeah. I just was so outraged and uh, just amazed. I mean, it really brought home just how... I mean, clear to anybody who has any question in the United States that there's people out there who have evil intent and, uh, you know, at us in general. Yeah, I, you know, I, I feel the same way you do. I, of course, I feel uh, outraged, and uh, nobody hates other races more than me, but <laughs> you, you got to realize uh, that was such a small percentage of that population. I, I think that that's what they wanted to avoid, was the idea that that represented the Palestinian response. And, you know, Yasser Arafat got out and there condemned and condemned it for what that was worth. But um, I think that what the news agencies did is they jumped on that originally and early and then realized it was a little bit irresponsible yeah. in, in the sense that you're talking about literally... A few, uh, dozen. A, a few dozen people, a few hundred people in the nation, a million yeah. that were r representing that nation. Yeah. And that the, the majority of those people in that part of the world did not feel this mm -hmm. way. And we I hope. Mean, we don't know that. We hope. I, I would assume. I, I can safely say the majority of people in the world yeah. are family, sort of decent people. Yeah. They certainly have a higher percentage in that, uh, that, that part of the world. And if you really think about it... Uh, if you're just talking about one tenth of one percent of the population, you've got a serious problem, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it still leaves over ninety nine percent of that region is good, decent, hard working people. Right. So it's tough. And and when it comes to you know retaliation, how do you leave that ninety nine point nine percent out of it? Yeah. Yeah. I thought it was also interesting in Bush's 
discussing how he went from saying we're just going to go after the terrorists, but also those company, those countries that harbor the terrorists. I think that's the key. That, yeah, Diane Feinstein really articulated that repeatedly and clearly as, as the new policy. Oh, yeah. Feinstein, by the way. Feinstein. Uh, and I do, you know, I think that was him basically saying, look, uh, we, we're going to take out a few targets here. Yeah. And it's not just going to be uh, Bin Laden's place. Yeah, we're going to take out a few places, and uh, it's game on. Yeah. To me, I, I read that to him. I read that is him saying, "When you come back and ask me why we hit these targets a week from now, I'm going to say refer to the footage where I said the countries that harbor them yeah. are enemy, yeah. enemy number one too." All right. Thanks, uh, Steve, and I uh, appreciate you uh, going and giving blood. Yeah, we got to do that. I was uh, I was close to. I got a couple busy signals, and then I uh, got distracted. Jason, hey, yeah, you're 15. What's going on? Yeah, I'm watching all this stuff on TV, and uh, I'm not feeling a thing. I'm seeing these people jumping out of the buildings and flying down 50, 60 stories, hitting the ground. I'm just like nothing. Because you don't feel like it's really happening or is that no, I know it's happening I, I just it doesn't relate to you do you have things that do upset you mm, not really so nothing affects you pretty much well I, I'm sort of like you in that uh, I just almost can't feel it I mean I feel bad for those people but it's yeah, I don't even feel bad I mean you get nothing. It seems really heartless but I mean I just don't I don't feel bad do you I mean, I'm kind of, like, pissed off at the people that did it, but um, that's my always my response to, like, something screws with our country, we're going to go blow them up or something like that. So the only feeling you have is anger? Pretty much. You get to have anger. Yeah. It, does, does it worry you that you don't have feelings about this sort of thing? Sometimes. It's the only thing I'm, I was confused because why everybody else is like, oh, they, we're so sad. I mean, our parents were in there, and I'm like, Okay, should I be feeling something like that too, or what? Yeah. Well, there's no right or wrong feeling, but it, it does suggest that you may have some other things you're feeling that you're not so in touch with right now, and it may sort of tie you up and make you unable to empathize with other people. Well, here's here's the thing too, Jason, because I'm a little bit like you a lot of the time. I don't, I don't feel enough times, and I feel bad about it. That's actually, I do have the feeling about feeling bad about not caring about stuff. It, 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 as long as you have that that goes along with it, I'm okay with it. But but here's... here's yeah, I feel bad about feeling too much. <laughs> all right. Well, we, we, we even out. Maybe you're taking some of my feelings. <laughs> copping my feelings. You have right, right back. I'm, <laughs> but here's, here's where the danger comes in uh, people like Jason is... I, I really don't care that Jason doesn't feel badly about the situation. Uh, I don't think it's the greatest uh, attribute to have, but I don't think I, I don't feel that bad about him not feeling that bad about it. If it enabled, if if not having bad feelings about it though made it okay for him to do something bad to somebody, then it's a problem. Do you if, see what I'm saying? That again, if, if I don't feel bad about things that I should feel bad about, right. but I would never dream of hurting anybody. Right. You can go to being able to... Just because it doesn't make me feel bad doesn't doesn't mean I don't know other people are going to feel bad if I do something right. bad to them. Right. Now, some people don't feel bad about anything, therefore it's okay for them to act a certain way. Yes. And that's where it gets yes. dangerous. Yes. yes. And what I want to ask Jason is, is he may not feel, it, feel anything, but do you respect other people, the feelings they have, and would you ever, you know, hurt anybody because you don't have those feelings? I respect the other people, and nah, I don't think I'd hurt anybody unless they really piss me piss off. You off. So you, he gets the anger. Okay, thing, so right? you're just numb, but yeah. you're you're not dangerous. Not unless you do something that really <laughs> that pisses you know, them off, like like <laughs> sneeze. No, like I keep asking him stupid questions. Okay, man. sorry, buddy. <laughs> yeah, I, I actually okay. have, I have great frustration with people like Jason. They just it just frustrates me. I don't know what to do with them. I you know. I understand where he's coming from, and like I said, I, I, I'm guilty of that myself, but I would never impose it on anybody, thanks. And uh, I don't look at that as a great attribute. For you? No, I'm, I'm not proud of it. Yeah. On the other hand, I would never try to put anybody out with that. I would never say, well, look, I don't care, so it's okay for me to screw you over, because yeah. I don't give a rat's ass about you. 
I, I don't think that's right. This is for people like Jason. That's his own problem. Right. He can't impose that on other people. That's right. I was watching TV today, and I was hearing about those uh, those poor souls that were up in the airplane for you know they were saying up to an hour. Some of them huh. after knowing the plane had been hijacked yeah. and all that stuff. Uh, I you know. I was hoping that they would assume that the plight, you know, the thing was being taken Cuba. to Cuba right. and landed. I, right. I would assume that if you were in the plane yeah. and somebody was flying the plane, even if it was a hijacker flying yeah. the plane, you would think you assume it was not going to fly into the World Trade Center. Right. And, and I hope that being stuffed in the back of the plane, that they hopefully did not know about that right. until, you know, maybe never yeah. or the very last second. Mm -hmm. And then I was thinking about the guys up at the top of the World Trade Center while the place was burning and they were having to jump mm -hmm. out of honor stories and that stuff. And, you know, Drew, I've talked to you about wanting to keep the cyanide capsule in my Yeah, seat. maybe then now's the time for that. Just keeping it there in yeah. case the wheels come off the wagon. I open my door 15 years from now and my 14-year-old son is blowing the dog. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Just just chop right down yeah. that thing. Yeah. Back of the plane and... Uh, well, Muhammad is uh, stuck a uh, shiv in the throat of the pilot, and I can see out of the passenger window that the World Trade Center is on fire, and we're heading into the next one. Right on down. Right on down. Why not? I, yeah, why not? You know, it, it ain't the world's worst idea. No. Maybe not in your chin, because like you hit a speed bump in your car. And, <laughs> Airplane turbulence, you know. I can kill yourself, but maybe somewhere in your wallet. Yeah. All right. I'm with you. Uh, Mike? Yes. You're 23. Yeah. Hey, uh, guys, good to talk to you. Good to talk to you, Mike. <laughs> I just had something to say about this. Uh, back in uh, 1995, I was actually one of the Red Cross volunteers. I was uh, the first security team the Red Cross ever had in Oklahoma City. Mm. Uh, was Oklahoma City 95? Yeah. yeah. So, so believe it? World, years ago. Jesus, World Trade was 93, first one. Yeah. And uh, then 95, now uh, 201. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, well, hey, guys, I mean, this stuff, I mean, for one thing, it really digs up some things. You know, I saw some stuff out there. I never did really quite get into the site and find bodies or anything, but, I mean, still, you know, there's a lot of things out there that's, I know this is bringing up a, a lot of stuff here in this state at least, but uh, one of the things I want to talk about that's just been driving me mad is how people are, you know, they, they're, they're talking now about how this airport security is now actually should be a national security issue. And they're just now starting to do something with that. You know, how come they haven't done something already with National Security Agency? You know, they already know about these terrorists. They didn't, didn't you, hear, did you, uh, you hear me yelling about this about 20 minutes ago? I was saying the exact same thing. Yeah, yeah. Sure did. I'm pissed off. I'm really pissed off at two things. One is, hey, take some, have some remorse and take some responsibility for the fact that you let one, you, you let it down. Now, don't tell me what you're going to do. First say, you know what, we effed up, we should have been on top of this, and because we screwed up, we're going to compensate, and damn it, it'll never happen again. And secondly, the other thing the government was saying that just killed me was, uh, well, today's not the day to ask who did this. Yeah, Drew really? was uh, pitching a fit in here. Really? Right today's not the day? When the hell is it the right time to ask who did this? I mean, it, it's going to be an awful catastrophe for the next ten years. We're going to be mourning forever. Today's the day of shock. And asking who the hell did this. They will uh, find somebody, whether it's the right person or not. I can't say, but they are going to find somebody for this. Well, and, and listen, um, I was saying to Drew during the break, and by the way, for those of you listening to the show, we have our best poignant conversations during the break of <laughs> the show. We actually like to save up during the show so we have some good energy to really go at it during the commercial breaks when you all can't hear us. But I was saying to Drew, you know, human nature is, I don't want to make excuses, but human nature is, is something thing has to go horribly wrong in order for people to wake up and do something and this was it and man this was it in spades you know you would uh i would assume that something would have to go wrong in order for something to happen and you would hope that it was one plane and you would hope that it went in you know here's here's you know just the one plane going into the field uh, outside of pittsburgh that would have been enough to do it, but yeah. this was totally catastrophic, and unfortunately, we got taught a huge, huge lesson here, you know. Yeah. And and it will, but also, Mike, mm -hmm. is, as far as airport security goes, I mean, these guys had things that weren't really considered weapons. Oh, I know that, but, but, but I mean, see, behind my idea, 
these people are already known. I mean, the CIA, FBI, whoever, they already know about these people, regardless of what you hear in the newspapers or the radio, whatever. They know who they are. And if you put something, you know, if you link the two computer systems together, they run the, you know, they say, okay, let me see your ID. They look at the names. Okay, sir, we need you to step over here and talk to airport security for a minute before you board the plane. Right. You know, it's not necessarily invasion of privacy. You know, it's, it's well, more of, okay, we're trying to save our... Stay and, and by the way, there's no, a, lot, a lot of talk about not rewriting the Bill of Rights. If we are actually in a state of war, uh, Abraham Lincoln recalled the writ of habeas corpus, for God's sake. I mean, you can do things in a state of war to, to protect people. Um, we, all right, a couple of things. And, uh, you know, everyone should be aware of this. And I, I said this to Drew again during the break. I said, you know, people would be safer driving cars if they wore crash helmets. <laughs> and you can't argue with me on that. But at what point do you stop? And I know we've not done enough, but realize that millions and millions and millions of Americans and, and uh, other nationalities pass through our airports every day. Mm. And that if you slow that process down by even 5%, it's going to make a huge impact on everybody. And if you start doing all the, you know, submachine gun armed guards and stuff, eventually we just become them. And, do you know what I mean? You know and, what you and, mean. And, and, and I know there's. But you know, there's we're a, not them. No, we're not. But they have won at that point. I don't we know become that. a police state. No, not if we do it for a while. You know what I mean? If we no, there, do it. No, I think you have to pick and choose your battles. Uh -huh. I think uh, putting reinforcing the lock on the uh, cabin door that leads into the cockpit or flight deck, as they started <laughs> calling it, because they like to get it worked. <laughs> out of out, air travel. Right, out of the lexicon of language. language. <laughs> That's right. If they put and retrofit all those doors, which I'd imagine they're doing, uh, I hope they're doing tonight. Mm -hmm. If they retrofit all those doors with a security lock and put some uh, more stringent um, steel. No, no. Uh, regulations in place regarding keeping that closed, yeah. there's a good practical move that's not going to slow down mm -hmm. airport traffic that may potentially save lives. And it's that kind of thing that I would be all for. And, and as people have brought up, anyone who's done any traveling knows that it is the bottom of the barrel that works airport security. And not only airport security, all security. Go to a concert, try to get backstage, Go, an air, go to an airport, try to get through a metal detector. This is the bottom of the barrel. And I think there's not an air traveler uh, on this planet that would not agree to pay an extra 20 bucks on their commute from L.A. to, to New York to have a little, little higher grade of human being, a little more training, a little more education, and a little more on the ball. Oh. Nice. <laughs> More on the ball. Yeah, my my mic just broke in half uh, working that metal detector. All right, we're going to take a break, and we'll come back. We'll talk to you. More about your feelings about what went on today. Uh, love line. Oh, boy, Drew depressed. I'm depressed, too, but Drew is really depressed. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm harming you with my depression. He, Not depression. It, you got pills to take tonight? <laughs> I hope so. The cyanide pill you're talking about, or that's so. that's, uh, that's for no, that's five years from now when your your uh, daughter gets her first boyfriend. And this is yeah, you I'll know, keep it handy then. This isn't depression for me. This is just emotional. This is just I'm just emotional. I'm just, I, I I people I absorb people's stuff. And you were absorbing my stuff last night. Yeah, you were powering it out too. <laughs> I'm a storm in here last night. Oh well, we're all. Uh, you know, I, I, I think people are either sort of uh, numb or they're reeling in pain. Um, and, and, th and we're talking to people, and this includes us, who, who uh, as of yet don't know that we've even lost anybody mm. that may be close to us or even remotely close to us. Imagine those, you know, imagine those that had uh, loved ones in that building. Yeah, I mean, what are they place. doing tonight? What are they doing? You know, I, I, what, what are people... Uh, why, why? I'll tell you, um, not that uh, there's anything good that came from any of this, but I, I, I was surprised initially that those four jumbo jets uh, had about an average of 50, 60 people on board each one, which I, I was... It was 757. They're all 757, I think. 
Uh, or at least three. three I, I heard one was a 767. I heard that a, too. Which is a good size plane. I also heard one was a 747 that I heard not. Now. But you look at the ones, that the particular, the one you just saw, we watched some footage during the commercial break. That was right. a 757. Looked like it, yeah. yeah. Not a huge plane. No. But holds more than 50 people. Usually, yeah. I mean, true. when's the last time you got on a flight heading to L.A.? Right here. Yeah, I mean, I, I hate to say it, I would have been delighted if I got on that plane and saw, you know, five five uh, open rows. I mean, yeah. Drew, any any flight that we've been on in the last three years has been packed, packed. to the rafters. Yeah. I mean, I was if you would have told me that four good sized airplanes went down from four good you know good sized airports in L.A. Eight hundred. Yeah. That's it. Two hundred per yeah. people a plane would have yeah. been a conservative estimate. Yeah. yeah. The, the fact that there was 50 or 60 on each plane was, uh, was so far the only the only yeah. good news I've heard. Tara? Hi. Hey, you're 29. Yeah. Um, first of all, I just want to say thanks, you guys, for doing this. This is so wonderful. I've been a huge fan. I've listened to you guys every night for the last three years. And um, I, I kind of consider you guys like my best friends almost. Nice, it's kind of sad. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because that's the other friends you have, or because schmucks like us would be your best friend? <laughs> uh, I, I don't know. Probably both. No, um, so it, it's just so wonderful to hear you guys and be able to talk to you and say thank you. And um, I was wondering that the kid who called in earlier who said he wasn't feeling anything, yeah. how much of that is a defense mechanism? Because I've been doing, I, I was home all day watching the news myself and just, because it's so overwhelming, yeah. and maybe at, he was 15, I remember, if I... Yeah, yeah, I mean, what you're feeling is more the PTSD numbness. Your body numbs and goes into this sort of mode of, of feeling like it's a dream, it's not real, right. it's surreal, and that's a, that's a protective mechanism your body has. It's a way of detaching. It's what kids do when they're sexually abused. They detach, I and mean, it's that same mechanism that kicks in. And when you're an adult and it kicks in, it's protective and it's a defense. He at 15 is saying that he just doesn't feel anything about people. And that's a little bit scary. Thankfully, he people exist to him. Uh -huh. Some some kids, other people don't even really exist. They, if they have, if they destroy them, whatever. Yeah. This kid at least acknowledged other people exist. He would protect them from his feelings, but he was a little. He had the Corolla syndrome of empathic failure. Thank you. Yeah. No, well, I thought it was so endearing that Adam said he called the the blood bank to call. I just, I, I just almost, I started to tear up because I, see, Adam does have a heart. He does, he is. He just said that. He didn't actually call to oh, okay. He just figured he'd manipulate the listeners. Oh. Yeah. I told him not to say that on the air, didn't I, Jackass? Uh, you know. I... No, I did. I, I called a couple of times uh, today and, uh, and, you know, what, what, I, something, uh, not that I need to defend myself, but yeah. maybe I should. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, I used to give blood on a regular basis for uh, quite quite a many number of years for for no reason other than uh, I just thought it was a good thing to do. And I was I had a Catholic little brother and all that stuff long things, before yeah, any of this stuff. Adam has always been clear about about his lineage is that the Corollas are slackers, but they're decent people. That's right. Right, and uh, I did. I called, and then I called a few times, and it was busy, and then I just sort of didn't I, know what to do. Let's you and I go tomorrow and make a, make a point of it. Yeah, I'll do that also. I, I will. I also heard that uh, in news reports uh, later on in the day that they were turning people away, right. that, the, that the line was going right. around yeah. the block, and so on and so forth, and it was the same deal in New York, so uh, maybe this is just you know uh, convenient rationalization, well, but I thought, well, if they're turning people away, they're doing all right. Hey, listen, we're going to go. I'm all positive, too, so they need my stuff. All right. What are you? I don't know. Uh, you, you gave blood all the time? Yeah, I did. Uh, you have a car? Uh, how dare you? Are you questioning me? No, no. I just wonder why you didn't. Thanks, Sarah. I I had a uh, blood type that apparently was uh, was rare and that they needed, and so I used to give every six or seven weeks, whatever the time period wow. was. They would call me. The uh, place in Van Nuys would call. And I'd head over there and do it, and uh, I stopped because they called me once. Boss, I had a theory, which was. <laughs> I'd say to the guy, how come I only get to come every six or seven weeks? And he'd say, well, it takes six or seven weeks for you to replenish what we took last time. And then I said, okay, so as soon as I, the day I replenish what you took last time, I'm back giving more. I'm always running at kind of half a tank now. That at least was my theory. But they called me to come down there and said, come on down, we need some more. And I said, fine. And I got down there, and the guy said, you're a day early. And I said, uh, 
well, I'm down here, and I took you know I took half a day off work, so let's do it. And he said, no, nope, come back tomorrow. Well, this that's the ultimate Corolla, uh, what and, violation? And I said, look, I'm I'm giving this stuff for free, and I've been doing it for a while, and I'm busy, and I can't come back tomorrow, so let's do it today. And he said, nope. And I said, you know what? Your people called me and told me to come down. And the guy said, nope. Mm. And I said, well, I ain't coming back tomorrow. This and is what you hate. It's and calling that, a letter as opposed to the spirit. That was uh, that, right? was, that was about eight years ago, and yeah. I haven't gotten a pint since. And that there's that's what you get when you screw around with that uh, letter of the law crap. I used to give lead two all the time, yeah. and they sent me home once because I had blue hair. No. They said they want to take any blood from blue-haired people. They thought you had a hepatitis. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> HIV. Yeah. That's funny. And you're a drug user, Anderson. That I appreciate, though. Mike? Yeah. You're 15. What's going on? Uh, yeah. Hey, you guys are, like, great, you know? Uh, Adam, you're great. You're a god, of course. Thank you. Um, I think it's really great that you guys are... Uh, doing this whole emotional talk about this whole thing. I've been watching TV for the last six hours, and they're all, it's all a bunch of political analyzation, and I'm sort of sick of it. But uh, Well, yeah, you know, Drew was saying, I hate to cut you off, but here it goes again. Drew, <laughs> Drew was saying during the break, I think, that he was a little bit upset at the news coverage, and in even the president's speech, and, and, and all the politicians Santa they've had on. Santa time. Yeah, this is, there's no more human tragedy than what went on today. Let's speak like humans. Yeah, let, 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 let's let it rip here. There's every time to be real. This is yeah, real. I mean, look, I'd like to see a senator up there. I'd like to see him shed a tear. I'd like to see yeah. someone say, hey, listen, uh, I'm pissed off, and uh, I want to see somebody pay for this. And, and you know what? I'm mad at myself for not seeing this coming. I take responsibility. I'm remorseful that I didn't do something sooner. Yeah, it's like... Right now, we have to take appropriate measures oh, to make oh. sure the people are paid back, and God willing, if oh. we all say a prayer, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> you know, it just sounds like more politicians uh, just talking heads, isn't it? Yeah, I, I agree. All right, um, so uh, what do you want to say, Mike? I'm sorry. I just want to say thank you very much to everyone across the entire country for putting in their time, for donating blood. Like, I personally have donated blood and done volunteer work at my local Red Cross. And uh, probably the best thing said today was George Bush when he said, you can melt, and this is roughly translated, you can melt the steel of our buildings, but you can't dent the steel of American spirit. And, well, and that was very true. Yeah, and I, I thought, for me, one of the most moving calls of our night tonight was Sierra from New Zealand, surprised at the way we all react to this. That was really interesting, I thought. And uh, without... Uh Sounding like uh, some country singers about to break into a song about how much I love this country. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you something, and uh, we should all take note here. This country didn't get to be the country it is by us rolling over when the uh, chips were down. Yeah. I mean, we got a scrappy country, and I think we lose sight of that sometimes. And we get a little bit caught up in crap. Yeah. And we get mired in. This is a country that. Although we're the, I, I consider the number one nation in the world, we like to beat up on ourselves. Yeah. And there's a lot of naysayers here. But I, I'll tell you, when something needs to get done, uh, we do a real good job of getting hey, it done. Here's the big thing. Tomorrow we're going to find out who our friends are. Tomorrow. You mean internationally? Yeah. 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 And I swear to God, anybody that does not co-sign outrage at this whole day, yeah. forget it. I, yeah. We, we can never have a relationship with them again. Yeah, you think uh, France will deny us uh, flying over their airspace to get to Libya again? <laughs> Pussy frogs over there. <laughs> Listen, here's here's the deal. Uh, anybody who uh, may be uh, in a different country listening to this show, it's time to pay the fiddler. We've been bailing your sorry asses out for the last hundred years. Now we need a hand. Let's go now. It's time. It's payback time. This is time. And by the way, you just letting us fly over your country is not really what you call a great contribution. And it may be something as simple as that. <laughs> France. France did not let us uh, fly over their airspace when we were going to bomb Libya some years ago. And uh, I just thought, how dare they? How dare those cowardly frogs do that after what we did for them in World War II? How dare they? All right. And World War One, for that matter, too. Damien? Yeah. You're 20. What's up? Yeah, I heard this comment about, uh, uh, somebody made a comment about the military being lazy. Not, not on this show. Oh, well, I just want people to know out there that, you know, 
what happened today was, you know, really messed up and that everybody in the military here is working hard to make sure that none of this stuff is going to happen again. And oh, no, no, we were we were complaining about the, the senators and the, and the government sort of... Uh, and not taking some responsibility for for you know some, some of what happened and for uh, dropping the ball a little bit in terms of their planning. Are you in the military? Yes, I am. What branch are you in? Uh, I don't want to disclose that at this time. All right, fine. fine. Normally, yeah. normally, Adam would hang up on you, but it's fine tonight. Do you, do you have any plans? I mean, what's going to happen tomorrow? <laughs> they talk to you about anything? No, no. I mean, we just we're 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 on like the president said, we're on high alert, and we can't and and and. We're going to be working hard. I mean, we're not yeah. stop work for us. Yeah, I'm sure. Good. Are, are you thinking they may be shipping you off somewhere? No, I, 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 no me personally, no, I don't. But uh, some some fellas you know may be heading, heading out soon enough? It, it's, it's possible. Hmm. All right. Well, God bless you. All right, thanks. God bless this country and the military. You know what I was thinking of while I was uh, watching the, the news tonight? They uh, said that they were on... Uh, Delta alert, yes. which is the uh, highest uh, alert. Uh, first off, how many goddamn things does Delta mean to the military? Because it seems to mean about 150 things. Delta right? factor. Delta force. Delta, Delta Def alert. Con. Remember DEFCON? DEFCON's <laughs> around, too. We were on, like, DEFCON and Delta. And <laughs> here's here's my take. And here's here's what I was trying to figure out. I mean, you help me. Maybe someone can understand this. In the military world... They basically do like the uh, Alpha and the Delta, and they, they do all this stuff. And Delta, to me, is, is the D. This is D, yeah. That's just the D signification. Right. Since when does D represent the highest alert? Of anything. Shouldn't it be A or 1? Why D? There's a bunch of letters in front of D there, there before you get to A. There must be some... Delta is just pretty much means. What if Delta means like a, a fan, like an alluvial fan is a Delta? Well, well, Delta maybe it's a fanning out process. You know what I mean? Maybe no, it's not the. I, I don't know. You mean Delta? Not delta, the letter, delta a, which means triangle. You mean? No, Delta like like the Mississippi. Un, un, you know. I know, but they, they just delta. call that a Delta because of its shape. Yeah, it fans out. And maybe, I, this, maybe I, this is a fanning out of military. But the Delta you know. just means triangle, basically. Mm -hmm. All right. but, well, anyway, no. okay. Somebody figure out that that Delta and that Def Gun. Oh, no. I, to my <laughs> I swear to Christ, Anderson, this thing missed my nuts <laughs> by half an inch. Do you understand? The huh. I, have, I have a forty-five pound mic stand. I just lifted it up and leaned forward, and the thing fell right through my I legs, thought, and I mean, uh, almost I mean, pinned one of my nuts. You would have, yeah. Laura's dog already tried to bite him tonight. <laughs> It's the whoopee mic. All right, we're going to uh, take a break. We'll be back. Ah, here we are. Love line. I'm uh, Adam. That is uh, Drew over there. We're talking about the uh, events of today. Go ahead and put line two on hold, please. Tara? I, uh, I, uh, Drew, let me talk to there you. you put him on hold. Yeah. I woke up this morning and, uh, I, I had a, a couple of strange things happen. A, as you know, I, uh, sleep with an egg timer yeah. as my alarm clock, mm -hmm. and the battery went dead in the middle of the night. No. And I woke up late this morning, uh. and, uh, I had a dream last night. I'm, I didn't bring this up earlier, and I'm not going to make much of it, but it was weird. I did have a dream of uh, I watched a plane crash. No. Yes. Yes, absolutely. And it was one of the... It was probably because then I woke up uh, shortly after that and looked at the clock. It was about 7, 7.30 in the morning. So it would have been after the uh, plane's crash. Now, I have a dream of plane crashes four say, or five yeah. nights a week. Yeah. I have two dreams. I watch a plane crash or uh, some uh, a pit bull latches on to my shin bone and will not let go. Yeah. Sometimes, if I'm lucky, there's a pit bull attached to my calf muscle while I watch a plane right. crash. Right. But I absolutely unequivocally watched a plane in a big jumbo jet go into the ground mm -hmm. this morning in my dreams at about 7.30, mm -hmm. 7, 7.30 in the morning. Could have been 6.45, could have been actually when it was happening or it could have been just uh, moments afterward. Mm. It's just interesting that somehow 
uh, that's what I decided to dream about, and wow. I spent the entire day watching planes yeah. go crash. Essentially, huh. it was a very bizarre to wake up after my plane crash a dream and start hearing about all these planes going down uh first message i got when i woke up was my stepmother on uh my phone it said uh 7 30 in the morning and my first thought was this is why i shut my ringer off i remember <laughs> thinking stepmom 7 30 in the morning uh and it was very cryptic it said turn on the news uh-huh. and it hung up and i said turn on the tv uh-huh. and it hung up and I thought, me being me, huh, I must be on TV. <laughs> All over TV, everywhere. <laughs> and I thought, huh, wonder why she didn't give me a station. I mean, uh, yeah, right, you're not uh bad at her, well, I'll find me, yeah. I thought. So I uh, walked over and turned the set on, and there was uh, everybody. And I was glad it wasn't me I was mm-hmm. looking at at that point. M- Michael? Yeah. You're 34? Correct. Uh, you, you're going to tell us about the uh, Delta. Oh, it's just, um... From when I was in the military and the fact that I've got friends who work in emergency services, Delta is like one or two, I don't remember exactly how many, uh, steps below martial law. Right. Uh, my, my And I understand it's always Delta means is it's the time when it's really getting hairy. And thank you, Michael. I'm just wondering why, why Del- Delta, Delta, which is D. Why not the Alpha or Beta? What, what, what about Alpha? Or Omega. Just pick them. Yeah, yeah, the alphabetical ways. Yeah. yeah, I'm telling you, the military loves saying Delta. <laughs> Daniel, hi. You're 15. Yeah. What's up? Oh, I was um. Well, first of all, I'd just like to say you guys show is awesome. Thank you. And um, like early today when I guess they like assaulted the planes with knives. Mm-hmm. Kind of like, I don't know, it's kind of stupid because, well. I don't think they, like, told the people they were going to blow something up because I think if the people knew they were going to die. Well... I mean, people are, like, heroic, you know. And yeah. They can be, yeah. Here's, here's, I think, the logic what happened is they, the terrorists told the passengers they had bombs on them, and if they tried anything, they'd blow the plane up. Oh, okay. Do you think then, that happened? That's what, that's what the phone calls said. But oh, then... I never heard that either. Then... This one guy, I forget his name, that talked to his mom in San Francisco. No, she I... told him about the World Trade Center. Oh. No, 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 I'm sorry. It was it was the one. Was some, I think it was the one in the Pentagon. The woman, the woman whose yeah, husband was I, the, I, I the did attorney. Hear something about that. That she, he said, look, there are, there are two other buildings that they ram planes into. You know, right. look alive, do something, and that's when they they got disconnected. And is that the one that went down in Pittsburgh? I don't know. I it, I don't know. It, it seemed like to me that the other pilots that were on the air in the Pittsburgh, one that went down outside of Pittsburgh was the last one to go in, I believe, yeah. were, were aware of the other planes that went in. Yeah. And maybe no coincidence that that one didn't make its target. Right. right. Somebody went in. And if you look at, if you look at its last few minutes in the air, it was, it was jockeying oh. around. So. Oh, my God. Like there was some struggle going on. Right? How do you, you know, how do you deal with that mentality? Do you, yeah. do you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, that, you just, you, the only way, way to deal with that mindset is to blow it off the face of the earth. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Thanks, Daniel. Yeah, thanks. Take care of yourself. Let's talk to Sean. Sean? Hey, what's up? Hey, you're 20. What's up? Hey, I just wanted to say thank you. I'm sure the whole country is appreciative of what you're doing tonight, giving us a way to vent and express how we feel. Thank you. It's going to be hard not to do this again tomorrow night. Yeah, we, we may uh, do it some tomorrow night. And, and listen, uh, people have been calling and, and thanking us. Uh, look, thank you for listening because this is nothing. I mean, this is we just been wanting to get in here and talk about this the whole yeah. the whole day. Right. And uh, this is nothing we wouldn't be doing anyway. I just wanted to bring up a point. Uh, I spent the entire day with my friends discussing this. Some of them has family out in New York or went at school out in New York. And um, we came to a conclusion that, in a sense, this event is our generation's Pearl Harbor. It's something that motivates us. It brings the country back together under one belief, under patriotism, and remembering what our country is about. Absolutely. It certainly melts away some of the differences, uh, you know, when you have a common enemy like this. Yeah, and, and I do think we spend way too much time in this country, like I said earlier, beating ourselves up, talking about how racist we are and how unfair we are to the other parts of the world. 
and uh, how we're polluting things, and, and we really kick the crap out of ourselves. We're like, uh, you know, we're like, we're like some big, good-looking jock who has low self-esteem, and uh, it really is. We, yeah. we really are. We're like the big man on campus, but we have such low self-esteem we can't get a date to the prom. Yeah. And it's just getting cathartic now. I'm going to now. You want to see me cry? Yeah. I'm really going to start crying. But you know, Pearl Harbor was what 1,300 men, or maybe 2, that, that was in the uh, Missouri or the. Um, but it was yeah, 2,500 mili military men. I remember. People yeah, in, I, I know. You war. make that distinction, and yeah, they tell them though. Yeah, they, I know. This guy was, you know, they're eating pineapples and playing ukuleles yeah. and sunbathing, right, and uh, exactly. a bunch of 19 year old guys who didn't feel like going to junior college right. and they're getting. Heads blown off, right, right. but twenty five hundred, and we don't know what the death toll is going to be. But I, I guarantee you, if it's four times that much, we'll be lucky. We will be lucky. So uh, this is quite a bit more uh, catastrophic than Pearl Harbor was to us. Uh, also, uh, we've never had anything brought to the uh, continental uh, United uh, States ever. Uh, I don't think people fully appreciate that. World War II, they did, uh, Japanese did uh, float a few bombs that uh, blew up in the uh, Pacific Northwest and yeah. killed like a couple of campers or something. But we didn't really get, we haven't, a couple of submarines firing a thing or two into some uh, place uh, outside of Poughkeepsie. But we never, we haven't had anything in this country. Mm -hmm. This is it, and uh, hopefully this is the biggest. So uh, we'll be back to wrap up with you. Good. Yeah, felt right. Yeah, felt right. I'm uh, glad uh, you all stuck with us and uh, let us <laughs> those, deviate. Those three of you that are left. <laughs> from our uh, format. Uh, I don't have anything uh, too poetic to uh, quote, no platitudes from the uh, Bible, but um, I, I do know that uh, this is a strong country. And uh, this is uh, not nearly enough to uh, bring bring us down. And, and those of you who are fearful right now, as I was saying to Drew, those of you who are scared to go to your work or to your no. school tomorrow. Fear not. Yeah. This, as far as terrorists go, their plan is wait till you fall asleep and then strike at a vulnerable spot. Uh, I think we're f the furthest away. From the next spot. From the next spot because everyone is on full tactical alert. And uh, what idiot is going to try to rob a bank the day after it was robbed? Do you know what I'm saying? I, I understand. So and I know a lot of you are freaked out. Uh, now's not the time to be freaked out. I mean, you can mourn. Mm. You can pray. But as far as being freaked out on your way into work tomorrow, mm. well, just this is infamy, and it will find that it will be revenged. It will, there, will, there will be justice. Right. All right. We'll be uh, back tomorrow night. We will uh, play by ear tomorrow night. Yep. Maybe we'll do some uh, our normal calls, and maybe we'll talk more about this. We'll see how you're feeling, and we'll do whatever you want to do. Until next time, it's Adam Carl with Dr. Drew saying mahalo. When the hell is it the right time to ask who did this? I mean, it's going to be an awful catastrophe for the next 10 years. We're going to be mourning forever. Today is the day of shock and asking who the hell did this. This has been Love Line. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Loveline is Anne Wilkins Single. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.